Many of our coastal ecosystems have collapsed. To understand why, we need to know the history of these environments. To help you see this, let me give you an analogy. A woman with a rare disease is away on travel. She collapses and is rushed to the hospital, but the doctors know nothing of her past. Without her medical history, there is a risk of an incorrect diagnosis. In the same way, without knowing an environment's history, we can easily misdiagnose the cause of its problems. Take, for example, the Chesapeake Bay, a severely degraded coastal ecosystem. For the past few decades, we believed the problem was pollution and excess nutrient input. Steps have been taken to reduce these, but the bay has not rebounded as hope. Now many scientists believe we have neglected its history. Chesapeake Bay used to be packed with oysters, which are vigorous filter feeders. It is estimated the entire volume of the bay used to be filtered through these animals in only three days. Imagine what would happen if such a biological filter were removed. Thus, it is not surprising that the major environmental problems for the bay began a century ago when the oysters were rapidly fished out. The point is, the problems of today's coastal ecosystems are not only the result of today's activities. Just like diagnosing a patient, we need to determine the history of our oceans and include it in our assessment of current problems. Only then can we properly resolve the problems that now exist. The following segments present summaries of three case studies showing the importance of historical perspective. They are divided into three parts. First, a statement of the problem. Second, what we feel was the initial diagnosis. And third, the current re-diagnosis. sea lions in the North Pacific have declined by over 90 percent. Previously, scientists have attributed this to starvation, suggesting that commercial fishing of halibut, pollock, and cod removed the sea lion's major source of food. But many have wondered why no one has reported seeing emaciated sea lions. There is now reason to suspect sea lions have disappeared because of predation. Killer whales used to feed primarily on great whales, which were over-harvested 50 years ago. Now we think killer whales have switched to feeding on sea lions. Lush kelp beds of New England have drastically declined, often replaced by seemingly empty regions known as sea urchin barrens. The urchins are the culprits. They eat the kelp, but what allowed the urchins to increase in number? It was thought that lobsters were the predators holding urchins in check. Recent overfishing of lobsters allowed urchins to increase but lobsters are, in fact, still very abundant in spite of fishing. What matters is what's not present. Of much greater importance are cod and other predatory fish which feed on urchins. They were once very abundant and grew to impressive size, but over the past 300 years, cod have been heavily overfished. Today, there are not enough of them and they are removed at such a small size they can no longer keep urchin populations in check. The vast turtle grass beds of Florida Bay have grown unhealthy. The blades are heavily fouled with algae and invertebrates. Entire beds have been wiped out by disease that infects the tips of the blades. 
why are they so unhealthy? Pollution and excess nutrient input from coastal development have been the obvious explanations. But no one has considered the animals that once grazed on turtle grass. What needs to be appreciated is how things used to be. Columbus reported seeing thousands of sea turtles in a single day. Whereas today, you could spend a year in the Caribbean and not see a single turtle. Turtles fed on turtle grass. They were once living lawnmowers that closely cropped the blades. Now the turtles are gone. The lawn is no longer being mowed and is vulnerable to disease. We all want to restore the quality of coastal ecosystems, and it is possible. The oceans are different from the land. Very few species in the ocean have gone extinct. Almost everything that was there in the beginning is still out there today, just less abundant and smaller in size. So there is hope. But to fix these coastal ecosystems, we have to know what we did to change them. We have to know, in essence, their medical history. If we can figure out what we did to the oceans, then we can begin to restore them to their previous richness and beauty.